Yeah, you too. What's happening? Yeah, man. Well, you know, just, just talking hockey, getting ready for playoffs tonight. Um, th this game tonight, Andrew, I don't know if you know this, this will be the first game I watch in its entirety because I do morning radio out here and um, I'm in bed every night at 637. It's Friday. I might have a couple wobbly pops and I'm going to see the Leafs win tonight. Letting the hair down. You're Let the be hair the deciding factor. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, first of all, man, thanks for your time in doing this. Uh, I'm going to get to some questions. Uh, we're going to get to some of the uh, live audience members' questions as well, if we have enough time. But uh, first of all, um, I'm finding out a lot about you. Uh, are you even <laughs> oh, a Star Wars fan being born on May 4th? I'm, I've never watched Star Wars. I, I've never watched a minute of it. No. So, so yes. No, I'm not. And, and I've got a lot of that. This year was like the first time I've ever gotten a lot of like the Star Wars. I never knew May 4th was a thing. Um, but yeah, I, I letting found people out know you were born on May 4th, 1980. May the 4th be with you. Yes. But you don't, you, you could care less. Yeah, I, I, yeah, unfortunately, I really could care less. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not against it. I just couldn't care less. <laughs> you're not 100 percent for it either now something just happened with your audio you went down on me a little bit you went down there the volume went right down to like two we were at 10 but uh i don't know if that's my end or your end you can hear me loud and clear i got you loud and clear How about yeah here yeah you're, you're a little low on my, hopefully the people out there are listening and can hear you but uh uh it's all good it's all good um just a quick tidbit star wars uh, uh chili peppers fan Red Hot Chili Peppers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're coming to Fenway in Boston. They're coming to here. Fenway. I'm going. Free makes a cameo in the new Disney Plus Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, which starts streaming May 27th. If you like Flea, if you absolutely. like Star Wars, there you go. Those two worlds collide. Right. We can, uh, that might be worth watching then. There you go. There you go. So you're, you're still down in Boston. Obviously. I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so my wife's from here, and, and even uh, during my playing days, we came back here in the summer, so this is home. Oh, that's a beautiful city, man, you live in. It is. We love it. Yeah, we're, we're about 20 minutes. Whoops, sorry. We're about 20 minutes outside the city and, and, and absolutely love it. So, ne I've never seen a hockey game, basketball game, or football game in Boston, but I've been to Fenway. And that, uh, that is a, one monster of a baseball field. It is. And yeah, the other ones are, are good. I wouldn't, you know, you're not missing much at the football stadium, but Fenway, Fenway's the one, it, you know, it's it, the Bruins games are great, but, but you can't beat an afternoon at Fenway in the summer, having a hot dog and a, and a, and a cold one. It's as good as it gets. Sweet, singing Sweet Caroline. <laughs> well, yeah, we could probably do with that. No one likes that song here. No one likes that no song one. in Boston. No Why one likes it. it then? I, no one knows. No one knows, but no one knows the person who does like it. I know why, it. Andrew, because by the time seventh inning stretch comes around, everyone's <laughs> jacked up on something, hammered. And they're all having a great time singing lyrics. Uh, yeah, that's, that's quite the uh, tradition that they got going on down there. Uh, before we get into hockey, and it's exciting to talk about hockey, um, tell us about um, Andrew Joseph Ernest Razor Raycroft. You've got so many names, um, but I feel like the Ernest. <laughs> that, yeah, so Ernest. Yeah, my grand, my granddad. So that's my go. mom's side, and then Joseph was my dad. So I got both grandparents' names in my name. Uh, French Canadian, so I think that's why I ended up with the extra uh, middle name. That's my mom's side again. So I get four names because of that French Canadian side. Love it, man, and a nickname to boot. Yes, of course. Most people call me Razor more than anything else. Did that point. start in juniors or did that start yeah. in professional? Yeah. I think anyone with a Ray and their name, you know, Ray started, you know, it's it, the hockey guys aren't that creative. So it ended up <laughs> Rays, Rays, Razor, uh, and, and certainly stuck. Wasn't because of my, my toughness, that's for sure. <laughs> it's like, keep it simple, stupid. Ray, <laughs> Razor, perfect. We got one for you. Done. Uh, easy, yeah. Uh, the greatest impact um, – uh, you probably made on, on, on hockey teams would have been either the Leafs or the Bruins. You, you want to start there and talk about each of those teams and playing for them? Sure. Uh, start in Boston. I got drafted by Boston uh, a long time ago now, 1998, and, and started my NHL career there. And um, original six, I was a Canadians fan growing up. So the fact I ended up on the Leafs and the Bruins is, uh, you know, terrible to my 12 year old self. Yeah. Um, but, but quickly became a Bruins fan. And then of course, playing for the Leafs, 
being a Boston winning rookie of the year, that was where I started, but, but going to Toronto, my friends all lived there. My family from Belleville, Ontario, it was, that was also a dream come true. And to be able to, uh to to play there and be in the city and and as you everyone knows up there in canada what what it's like to be a leaf and and leaf uh, nation is is something else you talked about the original six teams you played on one third of them you played on two of them <laughs> not just one original six team but the history and the traditions and and what went into being a bruin and what went into being a maple leaf can you elaborate a bit more Sure. It, it's, it's special. And, and you, I, I, I certainly didn't recognize it as much while I was in both places because I started out my career to original six. And then when you move on, you go to different places, you don't, the history is not the same. And, and the guy, the hall of famers that played in the sixties, the seventies, the eighties that are coming through the dressing room on a daily basis that you get to shake hands with and hang wow. out with and, and, they become your friends while you're there and, and you don't recognize that history all the time elsewhere. So uh, I've, I've, I appreciate it even more now that I'm alumni because now I'm an alumni with Rick Middleton and John Busick and uh, these guys that are around all the time to be able to get to see them. And then the same going to Toronto and, and seeing all those guys up there. So it, it's super special and, and I've certainly uh, appreciated it even more and more as I've gotten older. Man, those names you just mentioned there, I've been collecting hockey cards ever since I was a kid. I've got three older siblings, two older brothers that were diehard collectors of hockey cards. So we've got cards from uh, back in the early 70s. I was born 70s. So those names, Rick Busick, uh, uh, um, those are Rick Middleton, uh, Johnny Busick, sorry, uh, Wayne, Wayne Cashman, I think was one of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Of, Cash, the best. A yeah. bunch of Bruins that, those are cards that, um, the go-to cards back in the day, the Canadians, the Bruins, some of the Leafs as well. But just, just does that add to the pressure of playing for a team like that? All these guys coming out to see you nightly and uh, their eyes on you. They're, they're watching your every move when you're on the ice. It, it does. And it, it, it certainly, it, it adds to the experience in the NHL. And you know that there's, there's something that you, an expectation in those organizations that you have to live up to the, you have to carry the flag as, as they say, and continue to do that. And, and there's an, like I said, an expectation and respect level that, that you need to have for the organization while you're in it. And, and you're, uh, you're just a bit piece. You're never, you're never going to be bigger than Bobby Orr. You're never going to be bigger than that. Borja Salomon behind you or Johnny Bauer. Uh, those guys paved the way and you, you need to understand that, respect that and, and try and carry on as best you can. Time to remember some of the, some of the others, Brad Park, uh, Terry O'Reilly, Yep, uh, Taz is around all the time. Yeah, all these all these legendary players. Um, <laughs> can, can you talk a bit more, Matt, now about, about the similarities and the differences between being a Leaf and being a Bruin? She, the, the big one is the difference being in a Canadian market. It, it, you, yeah. you can never match what Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Edmonton, what that's like in those Canadian markets and having the entire country watching, certainly the Leafs, uh, love them or hate them, everyone's paying attention to the Leafs every single night. Uh, so, so when you're here, even in Boston or Chicago, Detroit, New York, it, there's, there's a great respect for the organizations, but there's other sports going on we have the patriots yes. the celtics the red sox we've already talked about that here in boston where it's the leafs and the leafs uh, right. maybe you'll, yeah. you'll get a little bills you'll get a little raptors but but come playoff time especially it's all about the leafs so so i would say that's the the one major difference between the toronto and the boston market as good as the hockey market is in boston it's 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 not quite magnitude of toronto and the similarities are uh, they're playing in the same division the expectation is the same the fan base, the core fan base expects the same out of you. So, and then the yeah. way they, they do first class, uh, the Bruins yeah. new practice facility, new practice facility in Toronto. Everything is first class with both organizations. Yeah. So, so, so true. All that stuff. Um, did you have, can you share with us your favorite teammate on either of those teams uh, and why? Well, so 
funny, one of my favorite teammates was Hal Gill, and I had him both in Toronto and Boston. We came together. Yeah. So, so that's an easy one. I can knock off both there. Uh, Darcy, <laughs> Ta- Darcy Tucker, guy Darcy. in Toronto, the best. Yeah. Uh, I played with him in, in Toronto and Colorado, so we spent a lot of time together. We had a great group when I was in Toronto. Brian McCabe, Matt Sundin, Thomas Caberlet, all those guys. Just great people, great great teammates and guys that I really enjoyed. Here in Boston, I had Joe Thornton, Glenn Murray, Felix Potvin, another Toronto connection there. Felix was, was my goalie partner the, the second to last year and his last year in hockey. And what a great person, great guy, to, and, and so much fun to be around. A guy that I watched in, in 93 and 94. Right. All great players, man. Great names right there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Your win-loss record, 113, 114, and 10. Nine career shutouts. You couldn't squeeze in one more game to get to that 500? Uh... No, I think I t- the worst thing is I took a loss in my last game, and, I, I, and I didn't start. I literally Ow. didn't start the game, which is even worse. So, so yeah, I, I messed that up. There, yeah, 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 of yeah. course. There's a, yeah, I'm sure everyone's really worried about my win-loss record <laughs> and, and the asterisk that's beside it. But, uh, yeah, I, I needed to play one more season and get to 10-0 and, 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 and really bump it up. But um, <laughs> I guess I'll take the 113. Maybe it was when you, when you scooted off to Europe there to play with the uh, Milano uh, yeah. Rosso Blue. <laughs> that's uh, it. I'm sure there were more wins than losses over there. <laughs> there was. <laughs> Uh, all right man let's talk about we're going into the first weekend of the nhl playoffs it's exciting sure during the week it's all exciting but now we get to you know watch the leafs over uh the weekend Uh, they play tonight they play sunday um we got two days over the weekend where we can watch our leafs uh the other series are obviously going on um who who do you see getting past the first round and moving on to that second round and with all these series going on well, I mean, it's like, so we'll, I guess we'll, we'll go to the East. Of course, that's what we're talking. Uh, Bruins are in tough right now. They've oh. lost their, their first two games down in Carolina. They're back in Boston tonight, uh, going to the game Sunday afternoon with my crew. So I'll get them away from mom. Mom gets the day to herself and, and, nice. and we get to enjoy the afternoon game. Uh, Bruins are in tough though, like I said, and they're down 2 all. I think they win tonight, uh, make it a series, but, but they got an uphill battle. They could still get back to that that game seven type scenario, the Leafs Tampa, what a series. And and you brought it up. It feels like the playoffs start now. The first two games are a feeling out process. It hasn't really felt like playoffs. I don't think not a lot of overtime games, not a lot of real close games you know, certainly in the Toronto series, the Boston series, they've been four goal games. Uh, This one feels like it changes tonight. This one, the Friday, Sunday games feel like it's really going to get cranking, cranked up. So, I, I it's so hard to take not it's take Tampa Bay. Sorry, it, it, that Vasilevsky guy. We we saw what he did the other night. I mean, this guy, fifteen and zero, fifteen and zero in games after a loss. Can, that, yeah. It's literally a Wayne Gretzky type record. That that's how I feel like what that is a Wayne Gretzky type record. Uh, something that I, I can't imagine ever being touched. So as a goaltender, then did Game One surprise you when he let five goals in? It, it a little bit. But I, I think, again, we're going to see these series go so long. I don't – you know, Toronto's not losing in five games. Uh, I, I still don't think the Bruins are going to lose in five games or get swept here. They're going to get back into it. Pittsburgh Rangers, they're going to go a ways. Uh, so, so, no, it's, the, the, of all the series, Toronto, Tampa, it's going to be the longest. It feels as though it's going to go 6-7. And, and uh, both teams can score a lot. So, it feels like – we just saw where that game gets away from you a little bit, where it's three nothing or three to one. You can pile on four one five one pretty quickly with the talent those guys have. Yeah, with current odds right now at Bodog this for the series, um, yeah, both Tampa Bay and Toronto even yeah. at minus one fifteen. So that shows you how close uh, and evenly matched those two teams are. Boston plus three thirty five, Carolina minus four fifty five. The one that I don't know, call me crazy, Andrew. I like the value in the Nashville Predators because there, you, you never know what could happen, right? They're going back home now to Nashville plus thirteen twenty-five to win that series. They've got uh, Bodog has Colorado in at minus six thousand five hundred. <laughs> yeah, Am you're I, not touching that. I'm not touching that. You're not one. T- <laughs> no, no. I'm that gonna put twenty weird. bucks on that. I'm yeah, why not? Bucks. Anything can happen in the playoffs, right? 
Absolutely. And I, I think it, we saw that they had a real good opportunity to knock them out last night on home ice. So you go back to Nashville, a place where it's really hard to win. They win game three, which you can expect, and, and you've got a series. So, so you know, it's, it's, it's good value. I appreciate the value in that rather than trying to parse between Toronto and Tampa. You know, there, there's not much no, there. Yeah. It's tough. I, I got goosebumps when I saw those odds on Bodog. <laughs> <laughs> Getting excited here. Uh, and obviously to win the cup, Colorado still up there. Uh, favorites at plus 300. Uh, Florida. Then you got Calgary, Carolina, Tampa Bay. Toronto and Tampa Bay. Again, to win the Stanley Cup. So evenly matched. Bodog has them both at plus 1,000. Good value in going at, going for one of those teams? Putting a little, a little bit down? I, I would put a little. What, what's Carolina at? That's not a bad look over on that Metro side. That's decent. plus 700 Carolina. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, they're up two nothing on the Bruins now. And then the, you know, they're looking at uh Rangers probably next up, which puts the, they don't have to go through Toronto, Tampa or right. Florida. So Florida. that's, I, I don't mind that value at 700 either. Yeah, but that's not happening for, because you're a Bruins fan. I'm a Bruins, Bruins fan, so I'm not putting it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, putting money yeah. on the Bruins. I'm looking at the Bruins value right now being down 2 nothing as free money. They're on sale right now compared Bruins, to what they were five Bruins days ago. plus 3,300. Yeah, there, there you go. go. To win it that's, all. That's it not all. bad money right there. Um, we, got, we got to uh, quickly talk. Uh, I got to get into a little entertainment here because I know you're a fan of Ozark. My <laughs> wife and I are huge fans of Ozark. We just finished uh, episode three, part two, season four. Are you, have you done the whole thing? No, I'm right with you. I'm exactly. Okay. We literally finished three last night. And, Perfect. Uh, so yeah, we're yeah, at yeah. The same spot. Now, we those are. others who are with us right now, no spoilers, please. But yeah, do you think we're gonna have an ending like The Sopranos? Um, do you see that happening to the birds? Like, leave it up in the air for our imagination, or do you think something is? going to happen to the birds something oh, it's something has to happen right i don't want i don't want i don't want my creativity i don't have that in me like i don't appreciate don't wanna... that enough i don't want to make it up i want someone to force feed me the answer and the ending <laughs> that's why i watch these shows because i couldn't think of them up on myself so like i said i, I don't do star wars I, I i need someone to tell me what's going on with this so so i need uh i need a finality to this i don't want the the, the fade to black where we we're not sure what actually ends up happening to them. Spoken like a true athlete. Get, <laughs> spell it out for me. Yeah. Don't let me think too much about it. Give me, come on, producers. You're the ones with the brains and the entertainment. Uh, That's right. It is, it's, going, it's so good, right? And, oh, it's and so my good. Wife and already talking about it, like we don't want this one to come to an end because in our minds, this is the best TV show going or streaming show, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. You gave you gave a good quote there the other day on Twitter. Can you repeat that? Oh, how they start! What kind? What cycle starts? Ozark in the middle of the playoffs, <laughs> round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah, what kind of cycle does that? And I, I because again, it would be done. But I, I've been working. I, I working. can't. I, again, tonight I've got Bruins tonight. I got Tampa, Florida, Tampa, Toronto. Like I can't watch five episodes and stay up till <laughs> three in the morning. So and that's it's the killing thing with me. These shows. When you start one, you want to binge it and watch it all. It's all there for you to stream, and you, you can get, you can do it all in like a matter of an after, a couple afternoons. But we That's got right. this playoff hockey that we love. <laughs> That's it. That we love. <laughs> And, and I'm sure so, I'm sure your wife's like mine, where she's like, "Who cares about this hockey? Let's get this show going." My wife's like, "This is <laughs> what are we watching this for? Let's get Ozark on." But. No, to tell you the truth, my mom, my mom, my, 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 my wife's uh, stepdad's grandfather played played for the Leafs, so she's right into the Leafs oh, okay, just good. as much as I am. So there's some, uh, good, good. He, he runs in the blood here. My my father-in-law is actually down in Tampa Bay right now. He, they live in Florida, and he's at the game tonight. So awesome. uh, it's going to be fantastic. No, no, hockey comes first, and then entertainment for, for this weekend <laughs> but Got uh it. the final question will be um the weirdest or strangest thing that's happened to you in the broadcast booth you you witness it all you see it all uh can you share a story with us oh boy um well the the big the the, the funny thing is here in boston right now is so where we are at the home games we're on the fifth floor so we're right in the middle of the action and, yeah. and since the pandemics lightened up here they're serving 40-ounce 40, 40 truly tall boys. They're 40-ounce Bud Lights. I don't think you can get small ones. So you can imagine people have been holed up. They haven't been to a game in three years, and they get excited. So we've certainly noticed the last few months, right at our desk, 
during intermission, during post game, people are a little more energized than usual. And we've had some people walk right up onto like right up to the set, like looking around. <laughs> we've got we've got security guards chasing kids out of the building. So it, it's been it's been more comical in the last few months with with the patrons around us. Sounds like the good old days at Much Music for me right yeah. there. Oh, it. Absolutely. I used to walk past and wave to you on the street <laughs> back in the day. Absolutely. People Queen, walking Queen by with street. the tall yeah. boys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, boy. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I was in that uh, one as much Andrew, as possible. Was this your first Bodog Live, by the way? Yeah, right. yes, it is. Yeah, first one. So it's been a blast. Want, want to do it again? We'll check in with you uh, as the rounds go on here. Absolutely love to. Pleasure. All right, my man. Enjoy the games this weekend, Andrew. Uh, great to chat with you, my friend. And uh, thanks for your time today. You got it, Rick. Great to meet you and, and enjoy the game tonight. Friday night, you get to enjoy it. Enjoy. Go, Leafs, go. And the Bruins. <laughs> and the Bruins. And the Bruins. Your Bruins. Thanks. All, All right, right Andrew. Take care, my man. Thanks for checking in with us. We'll, we'll check in with you in a, in a couple weeks' time. Awesome. Thank you.